If you've been dealing with anxiety, estrogen dominance, skin problems, or keep getting sick for no reason, even when you're eating well and taking care of yourself, then this video might be able to explain why. Because the root cause of all of these things can be something that's flying completely under the radar of most people, and that's copper toxicity. Now, copper is an essential mineral. Your body needs it for a bunch of important things, like energy production, forming connective tissue, and fighting off bacteria. But like with many things in health, too much of a good thing can quickly become a problem. And that's what this video is all about. It will show you what happens when copper builds up in the body, especially in the tissue, because there it can trigger all kinds of symptoms. Some of them are obvious, but many are so confusing that people bounce from doctor to doctor without ever getting a real answer. To start off and to understand all the symptoms that we're going to cover in this video, we first need to talk about bioavailable versus biounavailable copper. Your body can only use copper when it's properly bound to certain proteins like ceruloplasmin. That's a bioavailable copper, so the good kind. It's delivered where it's needed and helps you function normally. But when there's too much copper, or when your liver is too sluggish to make enough transport proteins, then it will start floating around unbound and it can get stored in your tissues. That's bio-unavailable copper and it's the toxic kind. This is important because when copper builds up in your body and can't be used properly, you can actually develop symptoms of both a copper access and a copper deficiency. I know this sounds crazy, but that's what makes it so tricky to diagnose. With this in mind, we can then look at the most common copper toxicity symptoms. Number one is chronic fatigue and burnout. You see, copper plays a key role in your body's energy system, especially in how iron is used and how ATP, so your cellular energy, is produced. When copper builds up and becomes unusable, that energy system breaks down. So even though you technically have plenty of copper sitting around, your cells can't use it properly. It's like having a full tank of gas, but a broken fuel pump. What makes this worse is that copper also blocks zinc, another mineral that's crucial for thyroid health, relaxation, and mood stability. So you're not just low on usable copper, but also on the things that help you recover from stress and make energy in the first place. That's why people with copper toxicity often describe themselves as exhausted for no reason, needing naps or caffeine just to get through the day, feeling like their body and brain are running on fumes, or burning out easily from even mild stress or mild exercise. This type of fatigue is a signal that your mineral system is out of balance, and copper is often at the center of it. The next symptom I want to talk about is anxiety. Copper directly influences your neurotransmitters. It speeds up the conversion of dopamine to adrenaline, which puts your nervous system into overdrive. You're left feeling constantly wired even when you're exhausted. This is the classic tired but wired sensation. The adrenaline dominance will also lead to things like constant anxiety or panic attacks, racing thoughts, trouble sleeping, being overstimulated by noises or lights, and feeling like you can never relax. Unfortunately, unbound copper can also oxidize serotonin. So you now got low serotonin and high adrenaline, which is a recipe for even more anxiety, insomnia, depression, and emotional instability. In very severe cases, usually after years of buildup, copper overload has even been linked to symptoms of psychosis and schizophrenia. This is rare, but the connection is definitely there. So if you've been feeling emotionally raw, reactive, moody, or straight up panicky, then it definitely makes sense to look into this. The third very common symptom is estrogen dominance, and I actually recorded a video on this a while back. It's especially common in women, but men can also be affected. Most people think of estrogen dominance as just having too much estrogen, so they jump straight into detox protocols with DIM or calcium deglucurate. But what they don't realize is that copper also plays a huge role in hormone regulation, and if you ignore that, then your detox won't stick. Here's what copper does. It acts as a metalloestrogen, so it can mimic estrogen in the body and bind to estrogen receptors. Then your cells will think that there's more estrogen than there really is. It also increases aromatase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. And it also slows down estrogen breakdown, because too much copper messes with your liver enzymes, 
especially ones like COMT that are responsible for eliminating excess estrogen. Once your hormone clearance has been slowed down, then you will run into symptoms that are related to PMS, mood swings, weight gain, bloating, and hormonal acne. So if you've been fighting estrogen problems for a while and you're doing everything right, but it isn't really working, then also look into this. Copper is probably the missing piece. Fourth are skin problems like acne, rashes, or eczema, and just generally skin that's very sensitive or inflamed. There are a few reasons why this happens. First, your body will try to get rid of excess copper through the skin, which then leads to irritation and breakouts. But the bigger issue is again that copper blocks zinc, which is essential for clear, healthy skin. That's because zinc calms inflammation, supports wound healing, and helps your oil glands be balanced. Without enough of it, your skin will then become way more reactive. Similar to estrogen dominance, if you tried everything and your skin is still a mess, Hidden copper toxicity could be the root cause here. And lastly, we need to talk about immune system problems. This one is a bit tricky. Copper is technically antibacterial and needed in small amounts to support immune function. But when it builds up in the wrong places, it backfires very hard. For example, it oxidizes antioxidants like vitamin C. So even if you're getting enough from food or supplements, it's being neutralized before it can help you. Then again, it blocks zinc, which is one of the most important minerals for immunity. And you already know that your liver will get congested. So it struggles to filter out toxins and regulate inflammatory responses properly. The result is then that you might eat healthy and sleep well, but you still get sick all the time, always coming down with a cold or dealing with chronic sinus infections. These are very good signs that something is off with your immunity which again should also be looked at from a copper perspective. Aside from all of these common symptoms that we just covered, here are a few more physical signs of possible copper toxicity. Digestive issues like bloating, nausea, constipation, or even SIBO, because copper affects gut bacteria and stomach acid levels. Next, headaches or migraines, especially hormonal ones. Then cold hands and feet, due to copper disrupting your thyroid function, and lastly, joint and muscle pain. This can feel like early arthritis or chronic soreness. One more interesting thing, if you've always had a low alcohol tolerance, so you get tipsy way too fast or feel awful after just one drink, then your liver might already be copper overloaded. That was the case for me in my early 20s, and I didn't connect the dots until much later and realized that this was normal. Also, on top of all these physical symptoms, there are certain emotional and behavioral shifts that you often see in people with too much copper. They often go through a shift in personality over time, so see if this describes you. In the early stages, especially when they are younger, they seem really bright, bubbly, emotionally open and empathetic. That's because their body is still managing the copper fairly well, but as it builds up, or if they go through a period of very high stress or burnout, things start to change. They might become easily irritated or prone to anger and panic attacks, which ties back to the adrenaline dominance that we talked about. What you have to understand is that copper toxic people are usually very sensitive and easily overstimulated because all the copper stimulates their nervous system, which means they are on high alert all the time. The bottom line is that copper toxicity can show up as a wide variety of symptoms that are often very vague and difficult to pinpoint. Add to that the fact that most practitioners rarely check for it because copper often looks normal or even low in blood tests. But again, that's just what's floating around in your blood. The toxic copper is hiding in your tissues, especially in your liver and brain. This is also why so many people go undiagnosed for so long. They're told that they need more copper or that their anxiety is just in their head or that they need a specific treatment that might fix symptoms but doesn't really address the underlying cause. So unless the copper problem is addressed, the symptoms will always come back. If this video hit home for you, and I know that it doesn't for everyone, I encourage you to look into my videos on how to test for copper toxicity correctly and if you already know you have it, then definitely check out my Copper Toxicity Masterclass, which gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix this problem correctly. There are a lot of bad protocols out there. 
understanding and treating copper toxicity was the missing piece for my own health journey. And for many other people, it's the thing that finally makes all the weird disconnected symptoms start making sense. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.